Hello, my name is Chris Krulin from Sacramento, California, and today I'm going to talk about the technique of intraosseous bioplasty. After performing a standard ankle arthroscopy, debriding the joint and identifying the osteochondral defect, it is time then to use intraosseous bioplasty to address the bony component of a bone and cartilage lesion, also known as osteochondral defect. As we see here, we have three cc's of demineralized bone matrix gel, two cc's of bone marrow, and one cc of radio opaque fluid, which can be used with these other two to help improve visualization during fluoroscopy. Next to that is an 11 gauge cannula. And then once we make our mixture, we then transfer it to the one cc syringes for delivery into the bone. So now we are in our arthroscopy of the ankle. You can see the tibia, the talus, and over here on the lateral Taylor dome is the osteochondral defect. So after debriding it back down to stable bone, removing any fibrous, unstable bone or any pathologic bone, we can then address this bony lesion with the intraosseous bioplasty and provide biologic stimulation for appropriate bone growth. We first measure it and then on a width and depth and length, and then we get the cannula and place it into the lesion for the direct technique. And once we get it into place, we can either impact it or use a drill to place it in. And for this purpose today, we will do an impactor. Okay, let's see where we're at. When placing this cannula, you need to make sure that the third or most superior hole is all the way down. Here you can see the tip of it sticking out. And if you're not all the way down with that third hole, the material will escape out the defect and not go into the surrounding bone and bone marrow lesion. So let's impact it a little bit more. Good. Now you can already see that we're getting some fatty globules coming out from placement of the cannula, showing that we're in the appropriate location. So once you have made your mixture, you can then test your mixture on your glove to see if it is of the right consistency that you want. And it should be fairly fluid. Next, we transfer the fluid into the 1cc cannulas, which provide for easier application of the material. Now that we confirmed our position with fluoroscopy, we then remove the inner trocar and we're left with the cannula. We then attach the syringe to the cannula to inject the biologic material. Now we place the camera in position with the water on and watch our injection. First, you'll see a flush of fatty material and air bubbles from the cannula. And then the material starts to get thicker and you can see a little pink flush. And that is the DBM and bone marrow coming out. And you can rotate the cannula and inject more. There you can see a little bit of return of the IOBP mixture. Once you have injected the material and you start to see this return, you can remove the arthroscope and take another fluoroscopic image to see where the material has gone in the bone. Once the IOBP is complete, you can then address the cartilage aspect of the joint by using biocartilage. First, dry the joint put it into non-invasive distraction, and then place the biocartilage into the osteochondral defect. Once that is complete, the rehab protocol begins by first placing the patient in a splint with no motion for the first two weeks. At two weeks, the patient will come out of the splint and be placed in a boot, but continue non-weight bearing. Range of motion begins at this point. At week four to week six, the weight bearing will be initiated. This will vary depending on the size and location of the defect. The weight bearing will continue in the boot till weeks 10 to 12, again, depending on the lesion. And then weight bearing will be initiated out of the boot with impact activity being initiated around six months.